This might be the ugliest boot I've ever cut in half. It looks like a Frankenstein boot. The whole reason I bought this was because I like Birkenstock. I like what they do. I like their traditional uh, way of making stuff when it comes to their sandals and their clogs. But we've seen pretty much nothing but bull boots from Birkenstock, except for one boot out of all like the five or six we cut apart. Even the more recent one we cut apart last week or sometime this week is mostly just kind of BS. Looks from the outside to be a lot higher quality. You know, it's, it retails for a little bit more than the rest. It looks like it has decent quality leather. Despite it being a full Frankenstein boot, I have some hopes for this. But my question is, is this boot BS like all the rest of the Birkenstocks? Is this cork line on the outside just about like the rest of them where it doesn't even represent what's on the inside of the boot? So ultimately we're trying to figure out if Birkenstock boots are bull****. So what is this atrocious looking boot? Well, the brand is obviously Birkenstock. The style is the Prescott Lace-Up. They weigh one pound, 11 ounces. They retail for a pretty steep $240. They're made in Portugal. And the way that Birkenstock positions this product is lace up with premium materials and a legendary comfort. The new Prescott ankle boot is crafted with our highest quality natural leather. Inside, a deep blue footbed optimizes your comfort with moisture wicking lining and PU base that works with your natural walking motion on long active days. Complete with a natural rubber outsole to keep your confidence on the move. If you want a pair of these, check them out. The link in my description. But they got some good claims there. Say it's uh, premium materials, highest quality natural leather, Leather. I would be shocked if that's true based off all the other Birkenstock boots we've seen and like I said there has been this boot that was a really nice leather I can't remember if it was Horween or if it was just a, a copy it's like it's a very chrome excel leather and so does this leather at least uh, hold up to this standard that Birkenstock is set for their highest quality boot that we've seen well it does seem like it's better than most of the leathers. It's an oil tanned leather where you've got a lot of conditioning and oils worked into it. So it has a nice supple feel to it. We burned it. it, doesn't seem to have any plastic on top, but clearly it has a really heavy pigment, but it's not horrible. It's not nearly as bad as this really heavy pigment that we saw in this boot last week. And so it works pretty well for a black boot. And if I was to compare this to another boot in a similar style in the Doc Martens, this is still better than 99% of Doc Martens leather, maybe except for some of their made in England leathers. It's thick enough at two millimeters thick. It took 128 pounds of puncture through. And if you look at the cross section, you can tell that there is some grain in there. So overall, it's a pretty decent leather. Is it the highest quality premium leather in the world? Not even close. It's a very mid tiered leather. We've seen higher quality leather in cheaper boots. Maybe it's premium for Birkenstock, but it's just not premium when it comes to the full spectrum of leather. But that's about where the premium leather ends. Cause if you look on the inside, it looks like it's a nice, pigskin lining, but as soon as you put a flame to it, it shrivels up and basically melts, which tells us that it's not leather. It's a synthetic lining. So that's about the end of the, the good leather because even on the insole, if we pull this out, you know, I do like these insoles. I like the concept of them, but there's no leather in the insole. There's no leather in the lining. There's no leather underneath. You can see it's just a cardboard and fiberboard lasting board with a shank riveted to it. So this claim of like super premium, all this and that, it's clearly not true. There's only one aspect of this boot that's leather, all the rest is not. And even this insole, I'm sure it's comfortable and there's a lot of good attributes to it, but this it's not the cork insole that Birkenstock is known for. And I personally would rather just have the, the cork version, even if this is a little bit more comfortable, but I even doubt it. It's, it's, it's really hard compared to the other ones. So, so far not looking very good for the Birkenstock. Pretty disappointing. But what about the construction? Because we see that there looks like there's a layer of cork somewhere on the inside of this boot, but we know better based off the previous boots that it could not be any cork at all on the inside. And, and it makes it confusing on how this is constructed because it looks like it's one big cup sole. And you know, we saw a very similar, almost, almost identical boot actually in the Gorals Doc Martin Killer, where it creeps up the sidewall and it's one single cup sole. Assuming that's how this is built, I don't think that there'd be a way to get any cork on the inside if it is truly a cup sole. Because the way that Goral did it is, you, you can see you can't see the cork from the outside because it is a huge cup sole and that cork is used to fill the void caused by the cup sole. Either this outsole is glued on or it's just fake cork on the outside. And the outsole seems very, very soft. It almost, actually, you know what? I think it is a foam outsole. Now that I'm looking at it, so it's pretty soft. Let's see how soft it is. 60 Shore. So it's gonna be 
it's gonna be pretty squishy. It's not, not maybe not gonna be the most durable outsole, but it's you know nothing really to complain about. There's pros and cons to each. I'm more concerned about what's on the inside. So let's cut these in half and see what's on the inside and see if there is actually any more premium materials or if they're just positioning this as a $260 premium boot that it only looks like it on the outside because that's the only premium materials. So let's cut them in half. Okay, we got them cut in half. So let's see if it is just BS through and through on this Birkenstock or if there's some saving graces on the inside. So I was actually very wrong. It is true cork that runs all the way underneath the insole. And that's surprising. I thought for sure it was gonna be fake cork like these other boots. Is it enough cork that it actually matters? You know, it's not enough cork that you're really gonna feel much. It might as well just be a, a, a layer of rubber. Like we talked about in the previous video, this is mostly rubber with a little bit of cork in it versus the typical cork you get from Birkenstocks is mostly cork with a little bit of rubber in it. It's technically cork and, and it'd probably be a little bit softer than a rubber slip sole or midsole. So I guess what I'm getting at is it's really not, you don't get any real benefits from it being this cork rubber material, unlike their other products that have lots of cork. One interesting thing is this uh, outsole it has a lot of these columns on the inside, so that's part of why it's so soft and squishy. And this would be a really comfortable outsole. It might not be the most durable outsole because once you start wearing into those columns, your outsole's shot. And as for the other parts, you can see it's it's just a typical cheap boot. You know, it's it's really not that different from this boot that we cut apart last time, where you've got the, the fiberboard lasting board, a little bit of compressed cardboard to support the shank. I don't really know why they would why this boot would be under two hundred dollars and this one is two forty, because it doesn't seem like they're that different in quality. At the end of it, is this Birkenstock boot BS or is it actually a pretty decent boot for the price? It's still kind of BS to me because it's $240 and it's built about like a $200 and under boot and it does have cork, but it's not really functional cork. But at least it is cork that on the outside it shows on the inside because that was the biggest gripe I had with these. Was, at least this has some cork. It's not, it's not complete BS to me, but it is probably the most ugly boot that I've ever cut apart. I think it's so ugly. The big chunkiness is, is what they were trying to achieve with this boot. I think they wanted a big chunky boot that was still fairly lightweight by creating a, a blown rubber outsole with all these voids in it while still having cork and some of the high quality materials on the outside, but mostly junk on the inside to keep it lightweight. So now that all this is done, would I recommend someone buying this boot for $240? It would be a tough recommendation. They're a little bit overpriced for what you get and they're ugly as sin, but if that's the look you're going for, they're gonna be comfortable. They're decent enough quality that they're gonna not completely fall apart and your money's probably better spent elsewhere. But if you want a wide toe box, art support, that has a big, chunky, ugly look to it. It's not the worst option, but it's far from not being BS. It's, to me, it's right in that middle. I think I would say it's mostly BS. I'm gonna say 60% 60, 60 BS, 40% not BS. Unfortunately, the hunt continues to try to find a decent Birkenstock boot that is actually decent quality. You know, cause this one was close and you can go watch that video and we discuss some of the, the things where they sacrifice durability for comfort and the pros and cons of all that. And it seems like they were terrible, they peaked with this one, and now they're kind of settling back down to making terrible boots again. There's always hope for a nice high quality Birkenstock boot that holds all those things true to the Birkenstock name with all the high quality materials, no corners cut. So maybe one day, maybe one day we'll see it because I would really like that boot. So let me know what you guys think and what other boots you want us to cut apart, especially in this kind of category where these big brands are using their well-known name that's that was built off of a specific product to sell some potentially BS products. <clears throat> and thanks for bearing with me with the voice and thank you guys for all that you guys do and supporting this these videos Rose Ample 2 and all of our handmade leather goods. So thank you guys. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.